Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on SD-WAN. Let's look at the software defined part of things by considering a WAN that serves many locations. In an SDN, network control and decision making is largely removed from the network elements and centralized in the controller. In SDN parlance, the control plane is separated from the data plane, so all SDN elements ultimately derive control plane information, such as routing, from the controller. Centralized intelligence can hide network complexity from the network operator. The operator can convey goals and policies to the controller, which translates them and undertakes the complex implementation, similar to how a compiler translates programming language into machine code. This orchestration, as it's called, considerably simplifies network operations. Note that SD-WAN management packages tend to offer strong analytical capabilities for deep data sets. Because of centralized availability, visibility, and control, SD-WAN delivers more dynamic routing and path selection, which aligns with the more diverse and dynamic connectivity needs associated with cloud-based services. SDN's automation simplifies many operational tasks in some cases enabling things to be implemented that otherwise couldn't have been. You'll hear about abstraction, as in the controller abstracting the complex network execution to simple rules or statements of policy, and such simplicity also improves scalability. In some cases, bringing up a new site can occur with little or no touch, especially if that site aligns with an existing policy template. Let's look at a form of abstraction called network virtualization. Here's just the network core, but this network as shown is just a representation and abstraction of where these elements reside. They in fact reside on different member networks of the internet with interconnectivity over secure tunnels. The controller knows all this, but all we see is the virtualized representation. Let's look at the connectivity for this site you probably guessed that this line represents underlying connectivity. This site is served by relatively low cost broadband connections from three different internet providers. Secure tunnels, possibly with underlying encryption, are created between the two SD-WAN routers. By the way, some of these networks could even be broadband wireless networks. SD-WAN manages all transport technologies. Also, while these routers are depicted as physical devices, commonly they will be implemented as virtual routers in NFV arrangements. In SD-WAN, the network has fine control of routing. Assuming 10 applications, let's say by policy that they are preferably routed thusly. Because in SD-WAN, performance is monitored continuously, apps eight and nine are routed dynamically based on immediate conditions on all three networks. In fact, all apps can be rerouted if necessary. In SD-WAN, routing decisions can be based on combinations of factors. Continually monitoring transport and routing traffic accordingly is one way that SD-WAN ensures acceptable performance. In the face of degraded transport conditions, some SD-WAN solutions will even take measures to redress them, such as applying forward error correcting techniques. Note that all transport is managed and presented as if it were a single unit. Here's a fragment of a carrier provided MPLS network. The headquarters site almost always has redundant connectivity, which is a near necessity but expensive, as also might a large office site. Internet traffic is often routed via headquarters and through a powerful cybersecurity device. To avoid excessive latency for internet traffic, a large location might also have a security device, which wouldn't be the case for a small site, and it could be a long way to the internet. As the internet is global in scope, think about reaching a cloud-based SaaS application and how far branch office traffic might travel to that app and all the added latency. Summarizing MPLS's pros and cons, it works very well and it's very predictable, which are significant attributes. However, because of cloud, 
connectivity needs are moving away from the paradigm that all applications are run at headquarters. MPLS bandwidth is also expensive, very much so in some countries, particularly in comparison with costs for internet bandwidth. And while we may not have known it until SD-WAN showed us a better way, MPLS management is labor intensive by comparison. Carriers are integrating SD-WAN and MPLS to create hybrid networks. So here, the SD-WAN equipment is carrier equipment. Here's one of many branch offices with broadband internet access managed as a unit as we've discussed. Notice here that the office's MPLS connection also is taken into consideration. For example, by policy, voice traffic might always be sent over the MPLS network. Now to complete the picture, the headquarters site avails itself of broadband internet connectivity and an alternate path is established for headquarters. Here's a final example of SD-WAN flexibility and scalability. Say the customer had subscribed to a cloud-based cloud security service, finally enabling this branch office, one of perhaps many hundreds, to have more local access to the internet and enjoy lower latency. Now, another security service provider supplants the original one. With SD-WAN, this migration is affected at the orchestration level and a network-wide cutover is accomplished very quickly simply via a change in policy. You may want to pause on this summary slide. So there we have it. If you found this informative, please let YouTube know by liking it, and please visit the Solutions Reservoir website to see my other tutorials. Thank you.